Welcome to another expertly curated episode of Furniture Industry News from FurniturePodcast.com, your specialized source for the most up-to-date developments in the furniture sector. We're here to provide you with invaluable insights into the current trends, pressing challenges, and burgeoning opportunities in the furniture industry landscape. Our commitment is to empower you, the industry professionals, with the information that matters most. Whether you are a retailer assessing the market potential for the upcoming seasons, a manufacturer facing the dynamics of supply and production, or a designer keeping an eye on the evolving consumer preferences, this is your podcast for a comprehensive view. Stay with us as we explore important industry happenings that could very well shape your strategic decisions and help steer your business through the complex terrain of today's market. Get ready to deep dive into the world of furniture. As we turn the page into 2024, the furniture market finds itself in a period of recalibration. Following a year faced with persistent challenges, the narrative shaping our industry is one of tentative optimism coupled with strategic caution. The mood is clear. It's a buyer's and hirer's market. The surplus of inventory, a result of last year's overproduction and an optimistic overestimation of pandemic-era demand, remains the elephant in the room. Retail inventory levels are stubbornly high, and as sales initiatives strive to shrink this excess, the demand for fresh finished products lacks momentum. This bottleneck situation is nudging our manufacturing counterparts into a corner, compelling them to reassess operations and trim their output to match the tepid demand. This cautious posture on manufacturing floors is reverberating up the supply chain, igniting a belt-tightening exercise among component suppliers. Those who once rode the wave of high demand are now facing the gravity of a retail sector struggling to shed the weight of excess stock. As a consequence, retailers' financial strains manifest as a chain of closures and retrenchments, casting a solemn but realistic shadow over the year's prospects. Within this challenging landscape, industry leaders suggest that the second half of the year might show signs of a cautious upswing, while others are leaning towards the next year for a more pronounced recovery. The steadfast rise in home costs, coupled with interest rates likely remaining above the 6% mark, adds to the complexities, making any significant revival unlikely in the short term. As homeownership becomes a steeper hill to climb, the resultant ripples affect furniture demand due to a subdued housing market. The imperative for market share is now clearer and more intense than ever, forging an arena where the strong can thrive and the vulnerable may falter. Sellers in search of financial refuge are likely to encounter buyers wielding greater leverage, selecting acquisitions with an increased focus on strategic value. The increased consolidation of buying power, especially at retail, is prompting manufacturers to diversify and widen their product offerings, a trend we may see burgeoning through the course of the year via mergers and acquisitions. In this milieu of intense competition, resilience and adaptability become the watchwords, the industry's ability to remain nimble, to make peace with unpredictability, and to seek out opportunity amidst adversity will dictate the scorecard for this year. And as businesses dare to navigate these choppy waters, those that can engineer a midstream transformation, embracing the competitive spirit while aligning with the authors of change, may just emerge as architects of their own resurgence in the furniture market of 2024. In a surprising development within the office furniture sector, Fellows Brands has announced the cessation of its Trendway production facility operations located in Michigan, marking a significant shift in the company's business model. This strategic move comes on the heels of a series of challenges that culminated in the closure of the plant later this year. The company's decision follows what has been described as disproportional investments in systems and equipment upgrades, along with an implementation of ERP and WMS in 2023 that failed to meet expectations. These factors, combined with persistent shortfalls in delivering on the brand's promise and financial benchmarks, have led fellows to the conclusion that this segment of their business model is in an irretrievable condition. John Fellows, CEO of the Namesake Corporation, expressed deep regret over the impact this closure will have on their customer base and valued employees. In the intervening months, Fellows Brands has committed to assisting their workforce in transitioning to new opportunities ensuring alignment with the company's ethic of support and value. Looking ahead, Fellows Brands will continue its engagement in the contract furniture industry. This will involve a streamlined focus on their thriving divisions, which include office products like monitor arms, 
power solutions, height-adjustable tables, and air purification systems, all integral to modern workspace environments. The company also noted that continuity plans are in place to ensure that orders for the discontinued products will be honored until June, with final shipments completed through the course of July 2024. As the company navigates these challenging times, it reaffirms its commitment to excellence within the remaining sectors of its operational portfolio. Customers are being directly contacted to aid in their transition and ensure clarity during this period of strategic realignment. Fellows Brands' profound move underscores the dynamic nature of the furniture industry and its need to constantly adapt to evolving market forces and internal operational efficiencies. As we look at the upholstery landscape for 2024, recent data from a Furniture Today survey brings to light some intriguing insights. Retailers have expressed a promising outlook, with stationary upholstery leading the charge, anticipated as the top sales growth category this year. In fact, approximately 32% of surveyed retailers are expecting sales to rise between 1% and 3%, with another 18% projecting a growth of more than 3%. When we consider the inclusion of motion upholstery into this equation, the figures continue to inspire optimism, with 21% expecting up to a 3% climb and 32% looking forward to a bump beyond that mark. These numbers set the stage for a deeper analysis of the challenges and high points anticipated for the year. Manufacturers have highlighted the intensifying competition for consumer discretionary dollars, which sharpens the focus on value, innovation, and product features that nudge consumers toward purchase decisions. It's clear now more than ever that variety in offerings and the agility to provide products aligned with consumer preferences are paramount. Sean O'Connor, president of Universal Furniture, noted an increased interest in new goods, with a shift away from special buys and closeouts, emphasizing the importance of retailers refreshing their floors with novel products. This sentiment is evident in Universal's You Choose Special Order Upholstery Program, which presents a plethora of bench-made combinations from sofas to dining chairs, promising to maximize dollars per square foot. Similarly, Manwa CEO Gabriel Natali underscores the necessity for retail floors to be revitalized with captivating products, citing a sofa chaise with sliding seats as an innovation already gaining traction. He recognizes that value is not just a matter of price point, but about delivering products that resonate with consumers. From Cozia to Skyline Furniture MFG, the shift in focus appears unanimous. Products need to deliver not only in terms of aesthetics and functionality, but also in terms of sustainability and the burgeoning interest in U.S.-made products. Megan Wecker, president of Skyline Furniture MFG, points out the strong attention given to sustainable credentials like GreenGuard and the Better Cotton Initiative, as well as the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion. As we edge closer to spring, manufacturers remain vigilant, understanding that despite best estimates, the unpredictable can always unfold. But it is the steadfast commitment to innovation that keeps these companies pushing forward. Be it in the form of cutting-edge massage chairs, scientifically validated sleep chairs, or versatile, customizable pieces, efficiency and uniqueness are driving factors for success this year. Notably, amidst the various fluctuations expected in the economic outline for 2024, it's clear that the variation in consumer demand calls for a diverse range of upholstery offerings. Retailers and manufacturers alike are gearing up for another eventful year, with poised strategies aimed at capturing not only the attention of their end consumers, but also securing a substantial market share in this ever-evolving industry. Turning our attention to retail performance data, the start of 2024 has been anything but ordinary. In January, the retail sector nearly matched the high spending seen during December's holiday season and also showed an impressive year-over-year -year rise, According to the CNBC National Retail Federation Retail Monitor, the resilience of consumer spending is evident, with core retail sales, excluding autos, gas, and restaurants, down by a mere 0.04% from December, but up 3.24% over the same period last year. However, when we zoom in on the furniture and home furnishing segment, the picture slightly shifts. Sales in this category dipped by 0.97% from December, and the drop is more pronounced when we compare it to January 2023, with a 6.35% decrease. This decline underscores the notion that recovery within our industry remains a patchy endeavor, with some areas showing signs of contraction amidst overall retail growth. 
Retailers across the sector are navigating this complex landscape, identifying and adapting to changes in consumer behavior. As spending habits evolve, so do the strategies of businesses aiming to capture the interest of their target markets. This nuanced retail performance serves as a reminder that within our evolving industry, agility and insight are crucial for capturing the shifting currents of consumer demand. In our next segment, we delve into the intricate perceptions of value from the consumer's point of view. A survey, as featured in USA Today, reveals illuminating insights into how consumers perceive pricing fairness among major brands in the home and appliance sector. Notably, overall home and appliance brands received a vote of confidence from the average consumer, with 71.9% conveying that they felt prices were reasonable, albeit with some variation across specific brands. When breaking down the data, Swedish furniture giant IKEA stands out, ranking ninth, with a commendable 79.9% of consumers acknowledging their prices as fair. Interestingly, this perception of IKEA's pricing fairness brings the brand into quite a prominent position, securing spot number 20 in overall brand rankings, a testament to their market strategy and value proposition. However, betting brands tell a slightly different story, with indications of a tighter battle to win over cost-conscious consumers. Ranked further down the list, brands like Sealy and Casper suggest room for growth in their pricing strategies to align with consumer expectations. The report also casts a light on consumer sentiments regarding pricing in general. A significant 43% of consumers reportedly feel frustration weekly regarding the cost of products. Despite this, there's a recognition that higher pricing can, at times, be justified mainly due to the quality of products, urgent purchasing needs, or simply the lack of alternative options. For retailers and large brands, these insights into consumer psychology are invaluable, not only for pricing strategy, but also for reinforcing the need to communicate the value consumers are getting for their money. With the ever-competitive retail environment, understanding and aligning with consumer perceptions is critical to sustaining and growing a loyal customer base. This survey transcends beyond mere numbers. It captures the pulse of consumer sentiment, shaping a narrative that industry players from small retailers to global giants such as IKEA can't afford to ignore. As we continue to see an evolution in consumer behavior, this notion of perceived value remains a pivotal point to be addressed by the furniture industry. In a proactive response to the enduring challenges of overseas production and disrupted supply chains, The Dallas Market Center has unveiled plans for an innovative new event, the Nearshoring America Trade Show. This strategic initiative is poised to provide a platform that fosters connections between brands and manufacturers, specifically targeting opportunities in Mexico and Latin America. With the global furniture landscape still reeling from logistical bottlenecks, the Nearshoring America event is envisioned as a crucial bridge, empowering industry players to explore the potential of nearshoring production. Set to debut from December 10th through the 12th in 2024 at the Dallas Market Center itself, this initiative represents more than a mere exhibition. It is a deliberate effort to streamline the dialogue between brands in need of reliable manufacturing solutions and carefully selected pre-vetted factories and supply chain service providers. Industry insiders will find an invitation-only list of participants, ensuring relevance and operational reliability. Furthermore, the trade show will extend beyond the exhibition floor, with a roster of seminars and symposia delving into the heart of nearshoring in both Mexico and Latin America. Additionally, attendees can avail themselves of resources like the Nearshoring America Index, a meticulously curated list of service providers organized by country. This bold move by the Dallas Market Center encapsulates a proactive approach to ongoing industry disruptions, positioning itself as the epicenter of a new, increasingly localized supply chain paradigm for the gift, home furnishings, and fashion accessories business sectors. And that marks the end of today's journey across the furniture industry landscape. We navigated through the buyer's market trends and took stock of the challenges on the retail front. We felt the impact of major brand closures and discussed the upbeat tone from upholstery retailers and manufacturers ready to innovate and offer value. Our discussions underscored the evolving consumer perceptions on fair pricing while spotlighting the striking initiative of the Nearshoring America trade show. As we close this episode of Furniture Industry News from FurniturePodcast.com, 
I invite you to share your perspectives on today's topics. Engage with us on our social media channels or visit our website for more in-depth articles and updates. Keep an ear out for our next episode, where we continue to provide the insights and analysis you need to stay ahead in the ever-shifting terrain of the furniture industry. Thank you for tuning in, and remember, your insight is what shapes our content.